praise this morning. Yes, yes. We, have, we have to give our God praise. Yes, right? We give God. God praise in all things yes. and all times. Amen? Amen. Well, welcome back, Amen. everybody. And good morning, my brothers and sisters. We welcome you back, everybody, yes, to Sunday School here at Providence uh, on this beginning day of Daylight Savings Time in this yes. fall season. Amen. Uh, we welcome you back. And, and you know, saints of God, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. This is the day, and we will. We will be glad. We will rejoice. We will be glad in it, won't we? Amen. Amen. We will be Amen. thankful, and we are thankful. We thank God for for just being here with you this morning. We thank God for our pastor this morning, Amen. Pastor Marshall Newsom. Amen. We just give him a praise. We thank God for him. We thank God for, for our pastor. You know, yeah. Tom Jonah, a radio show, used to say he was the hardest working man in show business. <laughs> well, I think we got the hardest working Amen. pastor in pastoring yes. on Amen. this morning. But we thank God Amen. for Pastor Marshall Newsom. Yes. And we are thankful for you this morning. Thank you for your obedience and for being with us uh, here for Sunday School. Thank you for your faithfulness. Amen. And we just want to pray for each and every one of you, and we, and we thank God for you on this morning. Amen. And just come with us now for a word of prayer. Amen, amen. Our Father in heaven, holy is thy name. And, O Lord our God, we pray thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for our daily provisions that are found in your word. We ask you now, Heavenly Father, to be forgiven of our sins. Help us, Lord. Help us, our Father, to forgive others when they hurt us, when they sin against us. Strengthen our faith today, O Lord. Now, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit take the lead in this Sunday school lesson. Yes, Guide us, O Lord, in the teaching of your word. And we thank you, Father. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. To you and to Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And for the sake of time, once again, we don't like doing this, but I, the lesson is a bit lengthy. Amen. You know, if I if I was if I was had the pastor skills, then I could do all this thing with with ease at Deacon Duncan. But I I, I don't quite haven't quite climbed that ladder on that level yet. Amen. So we're gonna we're gonna forego that this morning. Is that okay? Amen. All right then. Well, praise our God today, and once again, I want to thank you for being here with us today. I want to uh, just take a, just a second <clears throat> to encourage many today. Mm. I want to encourage you mm. to overcome. I want to encourage you to resist mm -hmm. the lingering effects mm -hmm. of the COVID pandemic's mm -hmm. dispersing, yes. the gathering of the house of worship. Mm -hmm. I encourage you to resist the enemy. Amen. 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 Uh, he, 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 the enemy of your soul is using the dispersal and social media mm -hmm. to keep you in a state of exile. Plan your days accordingly, therefore, my friends. Mm -hmm. Plan your days. Mm -hmm. for make up in your mind that I will be in the house of prayer yes. on yes. time. Amen? Amen? Amen. Thank God for you this morning. Amen. Uh, we are studying this morning, uh, uh, we have been studying, rather, the book of the, uh, the beginnings in the Bible, in the book of Genesis. That was in Unit 1, mm -hmm. where we studied first days. Mm -hmm. Then we continue in Genesis in Unit 2 with the study of First Nations. Mm -hmm. Today we transition, y'all. We transition to the book of Exodus, mm -hmm. Unit 3, as we begin our study of First Freedoms. Our lesson today is titled, Preparation for Deliverance. Let it be understood, before deliverance can be take place, amen, mm -hmm. the deliverer has to be sent. That's right. Yes, sir. There has to be a deliverer, yes, sir. amen. And then at the same time, the people have to be prepared. So when we get ready to be delivered, when you're ready and you submit mm -hmm. huh, to guidance mm -hmm. and instruction, amen, yes. God will send that deliverer. He sent one to most of us amen. that are here. Yes, That's amen. why we're here. Amen. We heard the word one day. That's right. And he reached out and he brought us out. Yes, he did. Amen. We thank amen. God for that. Amen. Preparation for deliverance. Our Bible basis is found in Exodus 3 verses 7 through 17, and a Bible truth says, God is always, somebody say, always, always, with us. Yes. Amen. Our memory verse says, Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you, and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt 
unto the land of Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Pedrasites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, unto the land flowing with milk and honey. And that's Exodus 3, 16 and 17, in the King James Version. And our lesson aim, by the end of the lesson, we will recognize that God is worthy of praise and worship. Trust God, who is worthy of praise and worship, and commit, and commit to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. In spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. So, thanks to God, what does preparation mean? What does preparation mean? Anybody? Readiness. Readiness. Mm -hmm. good, good synonym. Amen. There are some others. Um, uh, like training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about groundwork? Right, right. What about homework? Mm -hmm. Preparation. We're talking about preparation. What about instructions? Mm -hmm. Given. Coaching. Mm -hmm. They are all relevant to what God was doing with Moses yes. from birth. Mm -hmm. Did anybody hear me say that? Mm -hmm. yes. From birth. From birth. Mm -hmm. Preparation. He, Can we, we say before birth? Before birth. Yes, sir. That's even better. Yeah. God was preparing mm -hmm. a deliverer. Because mm -hmm. he, he was predestined. He was yeah. predestined to deliver, mm -hmm. to be sent. Mm -hmm. Ooh, ooh, it's gonna be good today. <laughs> I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm uh, feeling all right already. Yeah, I'm feeling it right. You know, but I'm gonna try to behave myself. This man, Dick and Duncan, I'm gonna try. Amen. God bless you this morning. Our lesson today begins with God preparing a man by what I said earlier, laying the groundwork for his training as an obedient vessel of God. Now the vessel in this lesson is a means of delivery, one that transports mm -hmm. and carries something or someone out. So in this lesson, it is God's preparing of Moses to take his people mm -hmm. out from horrific bondage and affliction. For this, Moses is being prepared as the deliverer. In Moses, y'all, I see a type and a shadow of Christ, mm -hmm. Jesus the Messiah. God's people needed to be delivered. They were in dire straits. I mean, these people are hurting. Uh, they needed to be saved, mm -hmm. just like today. Mm -hmm. People are in dire yeah. straits. Yes, people don't even believe that they're worthy to be saved. Both believe that their taskmaster have beat them down so much, mm -hmm. this world, that they're totally unworthy to be delivered, but the devil is a liar. Yes, he he yeah. is a liar. I don't yeah. care what your status is in life, where you find yourself this mm -hmm. morning, mm -hmm. a deliverer mm -hmm. is still with us. Mm -hmm. yes. The Spirit of the Lord is still here, yes. amen. But Moses was being prepared. Now the Israelites' conditions and treatment were so bad. They were so bad, y'all. Can you imagine just being dogged every day? Mm -hmm. Your wife, mm -hmm. your children, even got the kids under the whip. Think that. Think about that. Don't you love your children? Amen. Would you want to see someone abusing them? No. Can you look back on our own history? Mm -hmm. Well, think about that. It's probably worse. Mm -hmm. Probably worse. Amen. Uh, God was, 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 their treatment was so bad that God heard their cry. Yes, he and he left his throne and came, and to come down mm -hmm. to observe. And he was not pleased. Mm -hmm. God That's wasn't true. pleased. God remembered his promise, though, to Abraham in Genesis 15, verse 12 through 14. And which when, reads, And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a hour of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of surety that the seed shall be the stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them for a hundred years. Four hundred years. Four hundred years. Mm. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and after which shall I come out with great substance. Amen. I need somebody that's got real belief. Someone that's got real faith this morning that will know and say to me that God will keep his promises. Amen. Say amen if you believe it. Amen. Moses will call somebody. Somebody say called. Called. Prepared. Prepared. prepared and sent. And sent. By God. Amen. As the deliverer. But like Moses, we too must first be prepared. Amen. Does anyone agree with that? Amen. Moses would need to be prepared, to prepare the Israelites to be delivered, mm -hmm. to be set free, saints. Mm -hmm. There are so many today with the same needs that Amen. need to be delivered Amen. out of bondage. Huh? My friends, make no mistake. The man that God called in this lesson was being prepared long before 
God spoke to him on Mount Sinai. That's right. mm. Now we just said earlier, Pastor made it, made it, uh, put a put a footnote in there on me mm. before birth. Before birth, mm -hmm. because he was what he said that word predestined, predestined. Mm. predestinated. Mm -hmm. He was already God had planned this man mm -hmm. from birth. He will do this here. Go ahead, sir. Can I can I dial it back just a little bit? Dial it, Pastor. This preparation was part of predestination because God even prepared his parents. Mm. He even prepared his grandparents. That's mm. right. And sometimes we don't understand what God is doing. Right. But if we just go along with what God's doing, exactly. God mm. will do what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. May not ever understand it, may not ever see it, mm -hmm. but Moses was prepared, positioned, prepared. That's right. perfected, matured mm -hmm. for this call. That's right. For this deliverance of God's people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we see our role as insignificant, mm -hmm. exactly. but the master has a master, master plan. plan. That's Amen. right. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Glory to God. Just like he prepared Joseph yes. to be where he was. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and then when Joseph passed, we know that there was a new king that came up, wasn't it? Right. But he was pre it's just why he said he was put in position to save mm -hmm. all of his relatives. Yes. Oh my goodness. We need to learn to be still. Amen. And oh, let the, the, let the Lord. We need to learn to be still. Mm -hmm. we, we think too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Lean not what? To your own, to your own understanding. understanding. Proverbs, All we got to do is humble ourselves. Ooh, yeah. Let me stop. Let yeah. me stop. <laughs> One of my friends make no mistake. God did call him. And in this lesson, he, he was being prepared long before, as I said, God called him. Glory to mm -hmm. our God. Glory to the Almighty mm -hmm. God. I want us to understand that God not only prepared Moses to deliver the Israelites from bondage, but from the beginning, somebody say, from the fall of man, from the fall of man. God was preparing a deliverer, right. the Lord Jesus Christ, from the beginning. The deliverer was to, he was preparing the Lord Jesus Christ to deliver all mankind from bondage. Mm -hmm. Because if you are not saved today, saints of God, mm -hmm. my brothers and sisters, if you're not saved today, and I don't mean you church folk. That's right, right. I ain't talking about you church folk. I already know what that means. I mean truly saved. Amen. Well, if not, you are in bondage, my friends. You are a slave to the world, a type of Egypt, mm -hmm. and the devil is your pharaoh, and the demons of the devil are your taskmaster. That's right. Amen. It is the soul. You need to know that today. Read Genesis uh, 3.15, what God said concerning our deliverer from the beginning. Verse 15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt not, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Saints of God, these promises were fulfilled at Calvary when Jesus, born of a woman, crushed the serpent's head. Amen. From the beginning. Amen. From the beginning. Now, for us of the new covenant, listen to the Apostle Paul speaking to the Galatians in Galatians 4, 4 through 7, and verse 4 says, "But when the fullness of time was come, God set forth, God set forth His Son." made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons of God, hath sent forth the spirit of his Son unto your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And verse 7, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Amen. No more a servant, no more a bond servant, no more a slave. Mm -hmm. You've been set free. Our deliverer, saints of God, mm -hmm. has come, and he has set us free. He will return to us one day mm -hmm. to take us over a heavenly Jordan, Amen. another kind of Jordan, yeah. to the promised land where we will live forever. Amen. This Amen. is the promise. Just like he promised them that he would take them into a good and large land, mm -hmm. it took Joshua to take them over the Jordan mm -hmm. into Canaan, right? Because Moses couldn't go. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he had disobeyed the Lord. He was only able to look over and see the promised land. Mm -hmm. Amen. But you see, through your obedience mm -hmm. and through, because God has delivered us, yet we are still here, but God is going to take us across another kind of Jordan on into a heavenly, into heaven where that where we'll be living forever in that promised land. Mm -hmm. Saints, it's time to realize that you cannot have a long distance relationship mm -hmm. uh, with the Pharaoh in Egypt. I mean, that way, the way of the world. You can't have that relationship mm -hmm. huh? and a home in the promised land too. You gotta choose. That's right. 
You have to choose. Mm-hmm. Some folk believe they can live both. Mm-hmm. Because it, and it's obvious in the way they conduct themselves daily. Look around you. Uh, do you not know or can you not see the seasons? Are you not paying attention? It's time to make preparations to come on in while the door is still open, saints. And saints, you must come in at the door. Amen. Huh? The Lord Jesus Christ is that door and there is no other way. Jesus Christ will set you free from bondage. Amen. If you are allow yourself to be prepared in your heart and be ready when he calls your name, all you got to do is say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's Amen. all you got to yes. say Amen. is yes, Lord. Don't worry about those to your left and right mm-hmm. in your family. In your Don't look. You need to worry about you first. Right. Worry about yourself because everybody will give an account. Every soul will give an account. Like the yeah. word of God says, for every word you utter, mm-hmm. there's an account that must be given. Y'all understand, we need to be in the house of the Lord, and you need to understand that Moses, God prepared him Mm. to deliver a people that were in bondage. And he prepares each and every one of us to carry out the same type of mission through your witness. Through your witness. Amen. Um, Let's look at our lesson and see what the word teaches that we can learn to apply to our own spiritual lives today. Our Bible basis begins in Exodus 3, 7 through 17. But we will please open your Bible to Exodus 3, and let us begin at verse 1 through verse 6. So Exodus 3, beginning at verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Job, at, excuse me, came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in the flame of the fire out of the midst of the bush, And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And verse 4, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Verse 5, And he said, Draw nigh hither, but put off thy shoes, or off thy feet, for the place whereon thy stand is holy ground. In verse 6, Moreover he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Amen. Amen. Now, we know a little bit about Moses, don't we? We know that Moses was a fugitive from the Egyptians, mm-hmm. huh? and he was about 40 years old at the time. We know he was raised by the daughter of a king, the Pharaoh of Egypt. Mm-hmm. The Pharaoh of Joseph's time had died. And after a new king of Egypt ordered all the baby boys to be thrown into the Nile River, Mm -hmm. huh? Due to his fear of of the Egyptians overtaking them, Mm because there were so many of them, Mm -hmm. huh? He took this Hebrew population control measure. That's what I called it, Mm -hmm. population control. You want to, you want to, you want to keep them under control. Some, don't you realize they're doing some of the same things today in a different way? Well, let me stop. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get into the political stuff this morning. He, he, he took this measure, huh? Mm-hmm. Since the midwives refused to kill the baby boys at birth as ordered by this new Pharaoh, Exodus 1, verse mm-hmm. 1, Exodus 1 and 18. Now, Pharaoh's daughter drew Moses from the water, this infant son of a Hebrew woman from the water where his mother had placed him in order to save his life. Right here, saints of God, I told you he was predestined. Yes, God is still in control, yes. huh? Just because you see, there was, some, there was some things in that water, too, that could have took Moses out. Mm-hmm. You, I, I, I learned that the Nile had some of the biggest crocodiles and still do in the entire world. Mm-hmm. In the entire world. And she put him in this little thatched basket and pushed him away. And Miriam, his sister, looking at him through the weaves, yeah. the reeves. And she saw what happened to him. Mm-hmm. She watched him. Yeah. Amen. So, so uh, Moses grew up, we know. Uh, he was born a slave. Isn't that something? Mm-hmm. Born a slave, mm-hmm. but he, he, he grew up. He was educated as an Egyptian. We know all about these things. And he was trained in combat. Mm-hmm. He was not an ignorant man. Huh? Uh, he had the finest of living conditions. But one day while he was visiting his own people in Exodus uh, 1, 11 through 12, Moses killed an Egyptian taskmaster for his abuse, his abuse of a fellow Hebrew. Mm-hmm. His anger got the best of him. That ever happened to you? Mm-hmm. Well, thanks, that ain't a good thing. Mm-hmm. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. His anger 
got the best of him. Now Moses is raised as a prince, and even though he's a Hebrew, he was a skilled leader of, of Pharaoh's kingdom, but not the type of leader God needed. Wealth and education does not necessarily make one a good church leader. Saints of God, that is an error made because of the pride of men. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to go there and argue with you about it. Amen. Moses needed to be prepared to become a spiritual leader. Mm -hmm. He would need to be humbled and from a prince to a servant. Mm -hmm. From a prince to a servant. Mm -hmm. He would need the proper preparation in order to lead the flock of God, the children of Israel. And saints, that is what God does. It is not Moses in this lesson that will lead, mm -hmm. but God through Moses. Mm -hmm. Saints, let me prove it to you in scripture. Remember what God said to Moses in uh, Exodus 13, 14. And that should be, when your sons ask you in time to come saying, what is this? Then you shall say unto him with a powerful hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of slavery. Somebody say amen. amen. He brought them out. He brought amen. them out. Amen. He reminded them. This is what, this is after this. Mm -hmm. You see, he, he, he wanted you to understand that God brought them out yes. through Moses. Yes. The vessel that we spoke about earlier. You are become, you are vessels of God. Let him use you amen. to do what necessary, to, to bring others out. Mm -hmm. Let the Lord use you. You see, some people ain't, ain't just stalemate and sitting there. They were nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing at all. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now Moses, we realized, we killed that man. He later fled to a place called Midian. Mm -hmm. Midian, that's about 300 miles from Egypt, to the home of a Midian priest named Jethro. Uh, now Jethro would be important to Moses somewhere later on. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a man of wisdom. Mm -hmm. and he's gonna instruct Moses somewhere later on when, they, uh, when Moses is overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. huh? Now Midian is somewhere near Mount Sinai where he married one of Jethro's daughters and became a shepherd. Of sheep see the preparation yes. he became a shepherd of sheep see the preparation for 40 years Moses is being groomed to lead the way the Lord needs him to be God's people will be delivered because of the promise of God they will be delivered then one day as described in Exodus 3 and 1 through 6 Moses is standing on holy ground before God remember Saints the ground ain't holy if God ain't there well let me leave y'all alone Selah, pause, think about that for a minute. We must know, saints of God, when we're standing on holy ground. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, when we're on holy ground and when the Lord is present, the glory is there. Amen. And we know it. Yeah. Amen. We know Amen. it. Glory to God. There's no, there's no silence. There's, there's a lot of joy there. But in this situation, Moses had to take his shoes off. Why? Because you're standing on holy, holy ground, ground before a holy God. That yeah. means you can't just walk up on him mm -hmm. any kind of way. He had to humble himself. That's, what, that's one sign right there. God identified himself to Moses as the God of his father. His father. Mm -hmm. Now, did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. Of his father. And the God of Abraham, mm -hmm. the God of Isaac, mm -hmm. then the God of Jacob. This proves that these patriarchs are still alive, mm -hmm. even though they had died physically a long time ago. Isn't that something? He, he, he put it to them as if they're living. They should give, this should give someone comfort who is grieving the death of one who was saved. Amen. Though they be dead, mm. yet shall Amen. they live. Amen. Give God praise this morning. Amen. 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 Give God Amen. praise this morning, saints of God. Amen. 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 But you know, Amen. the word said, God hears the Israelites' cries for help. Now picking up from verse 6, and the Lord said to Moses in verse 7, through nine. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of the taskmasters, for I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land, unto a good land, and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Pezurites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And verse 9 says, Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppressions wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Amen. Amen. He's also seen mm -hmm. the oppressions wherein the Egyptians oppressed them. Mm -hmm. Now God let Moses know, and I want you to rest also in this knowledge today. I want you to understand mm -hmm. that the Lord has seen I'm talking about your life. Yes, amen. I'm talking about 
God has seen it, mm -hmm. your, your affliction. He has seen it. Mm -hmm. He has heard your cry. Mm -hmm. huh? And he knows. God is making his promise good right now because he's, he's making good on his promise to Abraham. He's making good on his promise to deliver mm -hmm. the children of Israel. God has promised us that he will return, saints of God. He will return. Yes, he will. Are you prepared for deliverer's return? Are Amen. you ready Amen. to be delivered? Are you ready to be taken out of this thing? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Our listening commentary states, that, states the following. God is sharing his plans with Moses. There was another time in the Bible where God shared his plans with Abram mm -hmm. right before Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Mm -hmm. This is the conversation going on between the almighty God and Moses. Mm -hmm. And he's telling him, I have come down and I've seen their affliction. Mm -hmm. I've heard their cry. Say, so God, sometimes all you got to do is be still. God has seen it. See, we just complain mm -hmm. and we cry and we mumble and we, oh, I have seen, mm -hmm. I have heard. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. I, 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 he, he's, he knows is what he's telling Moses. And this is, now he's, he's getting ready to do something about it. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. I, I'm telling you, he said, he said, I've seen it, I've mm -hmm. heard it, and I know about how they're being treated. I've been with them. Mm -hmm. Now they might not have realized it, we might not know it, that you know, as we, as we go through daily life and the challenges come at us, God sees it. Absolutely. What you need to do is remain faithful. You have to remain faithful. Mm -hmm. And you gotta change your mind Hey, some carnal-minded folks out here, Dick and Ryan, we think with the natural mind mm -hmm. and we can't see the host around us. Mm -hmm. We can't see it. You know why? Because you see, your mind should have been renewed mm -hmm. by now. You should have become by now a new creature. Your thinking ought to have changed by now. Where the enemy fights your thinking. Yes, he does. He keeps the natural eye open with props, mm -hmm. toothpicks or something. Because he won't let you close your eye and see what the Lord of God is saying and what the Lord of God is doing. Amen. Amen. Our lesson comments theory says that God lets Moses know his plan to come down, to rescue, to deliver, to save uh, the Israelites and bring them to the promised land, flowing with milk and honey, simply meaning a place of plenty. This divine encounter with God was specific to God's call to Moses, but it also revealed saints of God a great truth this morning. Our afflictions, someone say our afflictions. Our afflictions. Are not unknown to God. Amen. He knows. Yes, he you does. know what I'm saying? Sometimes we think, don't nobody understand. Yeah, they do. Mm. Yes, they do. Amen. God does. If you if I can't understand, if she can't understand, if you can't understand your own affliction, mm. God does. Amen. And he knows who it is that's putting it on you. Sometimes we do it to ourselves, by the way. My friends, stop crying. Mm -hmm. Stop it. Stop worrying. But commit yourselves to God. Psalm 37, 5 of the New Living Version says, we are to commit mm -hmm. everything. You might want to write that on your door in your house or something. Write it on your kitchen sink, wherever you stand a lot. Write it. Commit everything, everything. to the, and do uh, uh, everything you do to the Lord. Trust him, saints of God, and he will help you. Mm -hmm. Now, Psalms 34, 19 says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Saints, y'all, is so many of us that are so uncommitted to the Lord mm -hmm. and then wonder why mm -hmm. we have so many afflictions and no deliverance. So many afflictions because of the uncommitment to the ways of God, the uncommitment to his ways. Mm -hmm. God delivers the righteous. Yes, he does. Should I say it again? Amen. God delivers the righteous. I said that to wake up the uncommitted among us. Uh, we just need, we just can't live any kind of way mm -hmm. and then turn around, Lord, help me. Mm -hmm. And wondering why there's so many afflictions, why there's so much trouble. Always something in my life. Always mm -hmm. something. Always an affliction. Of course, where the Bible says there's many. Mm -hmm. Affliction, affliction mm -hmm. of the righteous. But he deliver, God delivers us Amen. out of them all. Amen. Amen. Now, God called Moses, he equipped him with knowledge. And then in verse 10, he commissions him. Read for us, please, Exodus 3, verse 10. In verse 10, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. 
The Lord had given Moses his marching orders. This is far from the Moses thought his life would be at this point, I'm sure. He was 40 when he left. How old? 40. Moses 40 was 40 old. when Talk he to left. Him. Talk to him. And now he's 80. Time to be still. It's time to be still. Not so with the Lord. It's time to go to work. Amen. After all, God has prepared him. He has prepared Moses. God's instructions to Moses were filled with the words of action. There will be no sitting in the meadows watching sheep. But God has commissioned him to lead a different kind of flock. God said, come now. Not tomorrow. Uh oh. Not in a little while. Wait, 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 wait. But now. He, he said, do what now? Come now. Come when? Come now. Come when? Now. Now. Right now. Right now. Right now. What? What? Immediately. What? Immediately. Come now, he come said. Now. Yes. Come on now. We do not drag our feet in Why? the work what, of what, the what, Lord. What, 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 why do we drag our feet? Self, flesh. Why? When, 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 when God called it, you know it. He said, come now to Moses. Yeah, well, there. Looked like to me Moses was dragging his feet. Hmm. Come on. He wasn't doing as fast as God had That's wanted right. him to. That's right. He started complaining. I will send you hmm. to God's authority, saints, and then your task is bring out to lead. Remember what we said earlier. Moses is simply the vessel. Moses is the vessel that God will use. It is actually God steering the ship. God is the transporter. All God's word in verse 10 are action words with urgency. So saints of God, let us act with urgency when doing the work of God. Amen. Amen. He said... I will send you. Mm -hmm. I will mm -hmm. send you. Now that, that gives him, he's commissioning him. Mm -hmm. On God's authority, he comes. In the name of the Lord, he comes. Yes. I will send you. Mm -hmm. He ain't just go over there and do this. I yes, will send you. Mm -hmm. The Almighty is sending this man, huh? Amen. And he sent him to do what? He sent him to take action, to bring out. Mm -hmm. This is what the word of God does. It comes, it comes. By the, by the preaching of the word, mm -hmm. to bring out the captive, to, re, to, to help you to come out of darkness. God sent him the vessel to do the work of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you see, he said, there's no sitting. You ain't gonna be no sitting around. You, oh, he, Moses is 40 years old, mm -hmm. you know, and escaped Pharaoh. He's out in the meadow, got his nice wife. He, he's under security at Jethro's home. I'm just gonna tend these sheep. Mm -hmm. Not, so. Not so. For 40 more years, mm -hmm. Moses is about 80 years old now. Well, I reckon Moses thought, well, it's time to sit down. Now I got me some sheep. You know, I ain't got to worry about them Egyptians no more. And all of a sudden, Moses, mm. Moses, mm. take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. Mm. Don't come closer. But you see, now I got something wrong with you to do. Mm -hmm. I heard the cry of my people. Mm. I've seen what the taskmaster is doing to them. Therefore, come now. Mm -hmm. That's the command. And go. He sent them. And you see, don't you realize when, when, when God, when you came to Christ, he drew you yes. by his word. Amen. Do you think he drew you to sit mm -hmm. and watch? Why do you think he drew you? Mm -hmm. he, so that he could send you out to, to, to witness, mm -hmm. to draw out, to let your light so shine mm -hmm. before man. That's why that there are still hundreds of thousands that are in a type of Egypt that need to be brought yeah. out, Amen. to be brought out. And that is what we are for. That is what he has trained you for. Remember earlier, we had talked about this synonym of preparation, mm -hmm. training, teaching, coaching, encouraging, mm -hmm. get you ready. God is getting, ready, getting Moses ready. He had get, been getting him ready since before he was born, mm -hmm. since before his, his mother put him in that water, in that Nile River, since before the kings drew him, his daughter drew him out of that water, since before they raised him in the palace, since before he killed the Egyptian, God was preparing him. Yes, was. They trained him, they educated him. God is preparing him to lead. You must be prepared, saints of God. So it is actually God that's steering this ship. Um, but just like many of us today, it is there Moses doubts his abilities. That's a shame. Don't, and you know that there's people that will amplify your doubt. Mm -hmm. They'll amplify it in you because they make, some folk will make you feel inadequate. They'll amplify it. Talk down to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. Tell you you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You make a mess of everything. Mm -hmm. You can't pray. 
You can't read scripture. You didn't read it with the proper enunciation. Mm. Oh, just, just tear you down. Mm. Saints of God, listen to me. It's God that's steering the ship. Amen. God is the transporter. You're just the vessel. Mm -hmm. All God's words in verse 10, she said, were action verse. But, but like I said, like Moses, many doubt he, 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 he doubted his abilities. Read for me Genesis 3, 11 through 12. And verse 11, And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go out unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I, I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of e Egypt, we shall serve God unto this mountain. You know, I can understand why Moses might have felt mm. inadequate. I can understand that. Uh, he may have been, he was afraid. Mm -hmm. After 40 years of being out of the crosshairs of the of, of Egyptians, Moses said to God, the creator, mm -hmm. the one that was speaking to him from a bush, while he was standing on holy ground, he said, who am I? And that, the same question many ask themselves today Amen. in the church, Brian, who am I? That mm -hmm. I should serve in the house. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable in this chair. Don't nobody see me. Ain't no task against me. Mm. Ain't nobody gonna, sh you know, anybody gonna kill me. Who am I? Mm. Do you know my background? Mm. Matter of fact, I, I, uh, I ain't gonna tell you mine, but I, a lot of y'all can't handle mine. You know, talking about who am I? Let me tell you who I am. Some of y'all gonna say, Pastor, get him out of here. <laughs> you understand me? Every one of us has That's a story. Right. Amen. Who am I? Mm. He asked the Lord that I should go to Pharaoh and bring them out of bondage. Moses doesn't yet know his new identity. Amen. He don't know who he is yet. Like many today, don't really understand who you are. Amen? The chosen of God, saints of God, when God chooses you, he will give you a new ID. Huh? Amen. He will equip you with power. That power coming from the Holy Spirit. Amen. He will Amen. equip you. Saints of God, I'm telling you, God will make you capable through his spirit. You understand? He will. He is the one that brings you out from where you were. Mm -hmm. He brought you out. Now, let him equip you. Let him prepare you to do the work of the Lord because you can't do this on your own. Right. You can work a hard little while with your flesh, but after a while, you're going to get mad, uh, Deacon Johnson, mm -hmm. Deacon Wayne. You're going to get upset when somebody crossed you the wrong way, <sighs> when people don't do as you think they should. Oh, it's going to bother you. Mm -hmm. But you see, you know what? When, when you're sitting here where I'm sitting and you're looking out there where you sit at 8.55 a.m. and ain't nothing in here but me and my wife, the pastor, and the angels. Mm. They're all sitting there Amen. giving God praise yeah. because probably the saint. Stop, Dick. Did anyone want to notice that Moses doesn't think with the same boldness he had while living as an Egyptian prince, mm -hmm. a man of privilege? Governed by his flesh? No. Moses has been humble, saints. On, in these 40 years, he's been humble. He's been changed as a shepherd mm -hmm. from a prince to a servant. Mm -hmm. He's been changed. That's what God does. He changes your nature. And because God is with him, Moses is actually, he, he's scared about going back to Pharaoh. Actually, saints of God, he is the thinking. Moses, because God is with him, mm -hmm. is more powerful than Pharaoh. Amen. That's the way you have to think. You are a child of the king. Yes. Amen. Change your thinking. Your thinking, your mind. The game is in here. Mm -hmm. It's the mind. Mm -hmm. If you come off the carnal stuff and let the Lord lead you, mm -hmm. let the God of heaven guide you. If you stop fighting, Stop resisting. Mm -hmm. Let go. You know how we used to close your eyes, Brian, and, and, and how that little thing they do, and fall back? Mm -hmm. You know, I always run and let them hit the floor. But, you, <laughs> you know, just let go. Mm -hmm. And let God Amen. be your guide. And I love the way the Lord replied to Moses' objection in verse 12. He said, certainly, surely I will be with you. Mm -hmm. Saints of God, surely, surely, surely he would be with you. Mm -hmm. You keep on watching social media and, and the news and, and listening to uh, Jesse Ray and them at next door, huh? And Havana over there. Don't listen to folk. Mm -hmm. Listen, surely sure. I will be with you. Go on and witness. Go on down the street and witness. Surely I mm -hmm. will be with you. Amen. Amen. I will be with you, saints. This is 
God Almighty. Mm. So what does Moses have to fear? Nothing. Mm. What do you have to fear this morning? God is with us. If only we would believe the word. Amen. If only we would believe. Stop listening to folk yakking in your ear after service, mm. calling you up on the phone, talking about why you shouldn't be there. Mm. Stop listening to that demon. Amen. If only you would believe. huh? Pharaoh would be against Moses. Yes, he would. Mm. But I'm reminded of what Romans 8.31 says. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, mm. what does it say, saints? Who? Who can be against us? Amen. We simply must believe. Saints, mm. huh, we are not to be afraid. Fear, God knows that fear, trust me on this one, mm. fear will stop us from doing the will of God. Fear. Mm. So does the enemy of your soul know this. The spirit of fear is not given from God, mm. but it, of, it is of the enemy. I know people get a bit nervous sometimes, of course. I, hey, mm. People get nervous sometimes, mm. but we cannot allow that to control us. Don't do that, because you, you ain't no good. Mm. Y'all nervous and shaking and going, what's wrong with you? Mm. Don't you know who you are? Mm. What are you doing? Trembling, nervous. We all, you know how you just ride? You might stand up in front of a great congregation one day, oh Lord, <laughs> you know, voice cracking and carrying on. You got a grip. Mm -hmm. You got to remember who you are. Mm -hmm. huh? But you see, fear is simply unbelief mm -hmm. and a lack of faith. Let me ask you a question today. How do you go out and witness if you're afraid? That's right. How? You're, you're stuck. It's dead in your tracks. Fear also steers your confidence. Replaces your confidence with a feeling of, inad in, of inadequacy. It's a mind thing, saints. It's a mind thing. By the way, be aware of that person or persons who always find fault mm -hmm. in you. That's right. When you're trying to do the work of God. Mm -hmm. Be careful of that spirit. Okay? That type of spirit also keeps you stalemated. It'll That's keep right. you in your pew. It'll keep your confidence down. When you hear that type be, listen, that is a spirit because it's not of God. Mm. God people uplift. Mm. They pick you up. They don't take their foot and kick you around. It takes your confidence. Mm. It drives away your desire to serve. When you hear that spirit, tell them, Deacon, not say you are liar. Mm. And I mean it. You understand me? Everybody is not everywhere. Just trust yourself mm. and trust what the Holy Spirit has put in your heart and do that. Go and do what he told you to do. Come now that he might send you, that you might deliver and draw those out that he's sending you for. The Israelites needed to be delivered. Uh oh, I'm, I'm getting in that preach mode again. Let me stop. Amen. Timothy 1 and 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, my sorry, babe, but the power of love and, the, and of a sound mind. Amen. God said further in verse 12 as a sign, a token, a sign that I have sent thee. When you get back with my people, you shall worship God upon this mountain, mm -hmm. the same mountain where God would give them the Ten Commandments. God is assuring Moses of impending victory. Mm -hmm. Verse 12, Genesis 3, 12. He's assuring them of impending victory. Amen? Amen. What more in your face proofs does Moses need? Saints, I know what, I don't know. I don't know what your journey might be like, but fear not. God is with you. God is with you. Mm -hmm. And victory is yours. God is assuring him. He said, when you get through bringing my people back mm -hmm. across that desert, you're coming right here and worship me mm -hmm. at the foot of Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. That's the promise. Yes. So don't, we, don't, don't be scared. Mm -hmm. Yes, the enemy is dead. Yes, you're going to get resistance. Walk right on through it because you're not walking alone. And that's the trick that the enemy plays against your mind. Why do I keep saying mind? The warfare is here. It's here. Amen? You don't have to be uh, Mr. Everything or Mrs. Everything. Be you. That's right. Amen. Be you. Amen. Hmm? Moses said, who am I? Hmm. Well, be you. Hmm. You just don't, I'm just a vessel. I'm Deacon Knotts. That Deacon Knotts is always off the rail. That's right. I'm me. That's right. Amen. Be you. Amen? Saints of God, uh, as we close, I hear God's response to Moses' question. God, he, Moses said, now, who am I, Lord, that I should go? Who am I, Lord, 
Who am I, Pastor? Who, who, who am I that, I that I should go out there? God responded to Moses in Genesis 3, 13 through 17. Read, please. In verse 13, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Mm. And he said, Thus shall I say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shall I say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared to me, saying, saying, I have surely visited you and seen which is done to you in Egypt. In verse 17, And I have said, I will bring you up, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt and to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Am Amorites, the Pejorites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites unto the land flowing, the land flowing with milk and honey. Amen. 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 I will bring mm. you out. Mm. Up God, mm -hmm. many are the affliction of the saints, mm -hmm. but the word of God said, I will bring you out mm. and give you a better land mm. to occupy. Saints of God, don't, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at being brought out of this world mm. into a better place forever. Amen. You know what I'm saying? But you have to keep your hand in, uh, in God's hand. As Moses is making his final inquiries to prepare for his mission, he asks God, what name shall mm. I give them when they ask me your name? Moses is not being arrogant here at this point, mm. uh, or nor is he crossing the line here in this questioning even though he is still an unwilling vessel. His questions, he's asking this because he's still unwilling to go. He, he don't want to go, huh? But God, he's full of grace and mercy. God is patient with his newly appointed servant. What about us today? Oh my, hmm? I wonder why we can't be likewise as patient with those who have not yet grown up spiritually. I wonder why. Have, have not grown up as far in the word or in the kingdom works of God. Just a question to consider. Mm -hmm. But later in Exit 14, 4 and 14, God, God's divine anger with Moses, Moses' reluctance is revealed. Mm -hmm. So God finally, you know, got tired of him crying mm -hmm. about his inability, mm -hmm. and he appointed his brother, um, a Leviticus priest, his brother Aaron, as his spokesman. So you see, God does get a little frustrated with us sometimes. Mm -hmm. You see, he done told you. I told you, mm -hmm. Sister Charlotte, stop crying. Mm -hmm. I got you. I told you, Sister D. Carter, I have you. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. You're going to do well in your new position. I got you. Mm -hmm. Don't you worry, Deacon Duncan, on that highway. Mm -hmm. Go do your, your work. And while you out there, witness to somebody. I got you. Don't worry about those children, Sister Anel. Mm -hmm. I got you. Mm -hmm. Draw. Do what I ask you to do. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Draw and bring them out. Mm -hmm. Bring them out. Mm -hmm. Go and do what I've asked you to do, Deacon Rogers. Mm -hmm. Do it. Don't worry. Huh? God, when God gives you the strength, you can do these things. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, um, Saints, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, he said, I am. Mm -hmm. This name for God points to his self-existence, his eternality, his, 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 his foreverness. I am the one who is and will be for all eternity. That's what you tell him. I am sent you. Mm. And he expressly let Moses know, I am who I am. Mm. I am God. Mm. That's all you have to understand. You tell him that. Mm. huh? I am for the God of your father. This will be an immediate impact on the inquiring minds there in Egypt. Mm. Why? Realize, my friends, that the God of the, of the patriarchs, all these men, though they were just common men, they were all called of God. Mm. They all had the first-hand experience and encounters with God. And we're all faithful, even though one, each one of them had their flaws in one manner or another. But they are the chosen. Remember that. God chooses who he will choose to do his will. God made them all the same exact promises so that when Moses tells them down in Egypt what God says, the Israelite children, this, this is knowledge among them. Mm. 
but they don't know who I am is. Mm -hmm. You see, but when they say the God of your fathers, mm -hmm. go see every one of them patriots, that's their uh, Abraham, mm -hmm. his offspring, Isaac, his offspring, mm -hmm. Jacob, his offspring. They are aware mm -hmm. of the God of their fathers. Mm -hmm. So when he said the God of your fathers has sent me, I am who he is. Mm -hmm. God said to go to the elders of Israel. Let them know that the God of their fathers has appeared to you. Tell them I have been there. Tell them I've been among them. Tell them that I've visited them. I have seen what these wicked people are doing to my people. Tell them mm. that I am aware of their suffering. I'm mm. aware of how they're being treated. In keeping with his promises to their ancestral uh, fathers, God said in, in the second verse of our memory verse, verse 17, and I have said, I will bring you up out of affliction. Amen. Glory to my God. Mm. Saints of God, fear not. The many are the afflictions of the saints. But in order to be delivered, mm. God must send a deliverer. Amen. And he sent that deliverer through the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. That is our deliverer. He has come. Mm. He has left us his word. Mm. All we got to do is walk by it. And, be, and he has set you free, then therefore remain free. Amen. 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 Application is... Like many of us today, Moses had all kinds of questions and excuses. For starters, he worried that people wouldn't listen, then says he isn't good enough, and later he asked God to send someone else. Does any of this sound familiar in some of your lives today? If so, realize today that God, that God is who he, that God is at work, and we are his vessel, his mouthpiece, his transporter. He uses us to bring others out of, of symbolic Egypt. So when God says go, when God says go, have no fear. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with us. And let us go into prayer. Amen. Dear Father, we praise you because you create the challenges we face in life. We praise you because if you create the challenges, you can help us overcome the challenges. We ask for more faith. We ask for more faith and courage when we are placed in all